Hey there, I'm Joshua Bardwell, and I just want to take 30 seconds of your time before we get into the video in case someone has stumbled across this video randomly and doesn't realize what the context is. This is a playlist of videos teaching you how to build a FPV, first person view freestyle or racing drone from start to finish. If you've stumbled in in the middle, Go down to the video description, there's a playlist link, start at the beginning of the playlist and work your way through. If you are working your way through this video, I want to remind you that there is a Discord server, a Discord chat server uh, for Quad Camp Online. There's a channel over there where we provide support uh, for the people who are working through this project. If you have any questions, you can ask them down in the YouTube comments, absolutely, but if you need a little bit more real-time help, you maybe will get better luck over in the Discord server. Link in the video description. I also want to remind you, thanks to Rotor Riot for helping make this project a reality. And if you are thinking of working your way through this project, you can get all of the equipment for, to build the quadcopter in just one credit card swipe from the Rotor Riot store. Yeah, you can buy the stuff elsewhere as well. One piece here, one piece there. Pay too much for shipping. Accidentally buy the wrong thing. You get it all. And there's a link to that down in the video description. On with the video. Uh, I think the next thing I want to do is install these standoffs. Now, we got these standoffs with the frame and we got a bunch of these screws that came with it and they're all going to go together. So we'll go ahead and open up those screws. What I like to do is just finger tight the standoffs at first and then I'll come back after the build is done and I'll, I'll tighten them the rest of the way. As you're installing the standoff, be really careful not to accidentally pinch your motor wires as you screw the standoff down. Just make sure the motor wires are out of the way. You can pinch it and you can cut the insulation and then when you go to fly it, something's going to light on fire. So don't do that. I'll just make sure these are out of the way as I screw it down. So now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight standoffs installed. And we can go ahead and install the camera as well. I think it might be a good idea to just do a check that we haven't made any mistakes with our soldering before we go any further. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my multimeter out. I am going to put it into continuity test mode and I'm just going to check the two prongs of the XC60 to make sure that there is no short. Again, I mean, like if I screwed up the soldering on the red and the black wires for the camera and the VTX, I might accidentally bridge those things together and then bad things would happen when I plug the battery in. As I said previously, when we checked the motors, you'll hear a very short beep because of the capacitors on the ESC, but you should not hear any beeping. That's a good thing. We're going to install the camera now, and there's two different ways you could choose to do it. Uh, on the right here are the 3D printed camera brackets that came with the CL1 frame. And if you've ordered your parts from anywhere except the Rotoriot store, these are going to be the ones that you use. If you ordered the kit from the Rotoriot store, then you also received these 3D printed brackets, which, well, I'll show you the difference. The brackets that come with the CL1 frame are going to install like this. And then the camera will mount in just like so. I'm just going to hold it with my fingers. And the problem with this is that the uh, you can actually see the standoffs. They actually get into the side of the camera view and uh, that's not that's not good. Now if you're going to use these mounts, the best thing to do is actually to mount them on the second standoff back facing forward and that pushes the camera just a little bit further forward like so and gets it almost completely clear of the standoffs but not quite and frankly this actually might be a little better because the camera is almost completely behind the standoffs in this situation and it's going to be just a little better protected from impacts. Now, if you got these brackets from the Rotoriot store, then here's how you're going to mount it. You're going to have it facing back and you're going to have the sleeve on the outside like so. 
And this is one of the advantages is this sleeve puts the camera at a consistent height, whereas the ones that come with the CL1, actually they can sort of shift up and down. I, I think it's better to just have the camera at a consistent height. And we're gonna put these on and then we're gonna, you're, the camera is gonna mount like so. And you can see that the camera just barely extends in front of the uh, of the standoffs. I think these brackets are better, and I actually asked uh, the, for them to be made specifically for this build because the ones that come with the CL1 frame are designed for a full-size camera. They're a little bit long. They don't place the camera optimally, and they have a little bit more give and wiggle, whereas these are a little stiffer. So these are the ones I'm going to use in this example. Having installed the 3D printed brackets, we're then going to open up our accessory bag and get the screws out of here. And the screws we're going to use are these. They're, they're M2, uh, they're two millimeter head screws. We're going to use a two millimeter driver and we're just going to install them. It may actually be a little easier for you to install these brackets on the camera. They're not on the frame, frankly. Here's the camera, here's the top of the camera. Make sure you use the top up. And what I think is easiest to do is take the bracket, sleeve side out, insert the screw, and then just screw that into the camera. No, no, that's wrong, that's backwards. I've done this backwards. Can you see if I were to install this as I'm showing you, the camera would be pushed forward. We want the camera pushed backward. There we go, that's how you want it. And with the 3D printed brackets installed, we can just push that over the front standoffs. Push on the bracket, don't push on the camera. It's not that strong. And there we go. That's how that's gonna mount. And at that point, we can plug in our camera. And I'll just twist that up a little bit to take the slack out. And the camera can get plugged in. And that's gonna bring us to the end of this step of the build. Check the playlist down in the video description to go to the next step, or if you're lucky, it'll even autoplay for you. See you there.